Welcome to the world of Five Nights at Freddy's, where fantasy and fun come to life. In August 2014, Five Nights at Freddy's unleashed its chilling premise on the world by introducing malfunctioning animatronics stalking a night watchman in a darkened pizzeria. This accessible indie horror, built on simple mechanics and a small budget, tapped into a primal fear of childhood mascots turned sinister. Its popularity exploded thanks to the terrified reactions and infectious commentary of gaming giants like Markiplier and PewDiePie. Fans went beyond playing, diving deep into the game's cryptic lore, weaving intricate theories in a thriving online community that kept the franchise alive long after each new installment. Despite not being explicitly targeted at children, FNAF's jump-scare thrills, devoid of gore, resonated with a younger audience, solidifying its place in pop culture. The chilling legacy of Five Nights at Freddy's proves that sometimes, the simplest scares can leave the most lasting impression. FNAF's rise to pop culture stardom wasn't a one-size-fits-all affair. Its appeal and detractors paint a spectrum as diverse as the fanbase itself. For some, the game's brilliance lies in its subtle horror. Gone are the buckets of blood, replaced by chilling suspense, eerie ambience, and perfectly timed jump scares. This shift resonated with those who appreciated a fright delivered without graphic violence. Others find themselves enthralled by the cryptic lore, a mosaic of fragmented narratives and hidden clues that beg to be pieced together. This intricate puzzle fuels a dedicated online community, where speculation, analysis, and fan theories thrive, keeping the flames of FNAF alive long after each installment. Accessibility plays a big role too. Simple mechanics and a budget-friendly price tag open the door to a vast audience, including younger players. This broad appeal, coupled with the infectious enthusiasm of the online community, propelled FNAF towards viral fame. And then there's the nostalgia factor. For many, FNAF taps into childhood anxieties about those seemingly friendly mascots and animatronics. This emotional connection adds an extra layer of resonance to their enjoyment. On the other side of the spectrum, some won't find themselves caught in FNAF's spell. Some argue that the core gameplay loop, while initially thrilling, becomes monotonous over time. They crave deeper mechanics and more variety in their horror fix. Others find the lore frustratingly cryptic, preferring a more straightforward narrative. The ambiguity feels like a cheap trick, adding complexity without substance. For some, the merchandise saturation felt exploitative, targeting younger audiences with a relentless wave of fun aft trinkets. This commercialization overshadowed the game's artistic core, leaving a bitter taste in their mouths. Later installments' experimentation with different styles and horror tropes also alienated some fans. They felt the series lost its focus, straying too far from the minimalist brilliance of the first game. No community is free from its share of negativity, and FNAF's fandom is no exception. Toxic behavior, misinformation, and excessive shipping can drive potential fans away from the franchise. Ultimately, whether you love or hate FNAF boils down to personal preference and how you choose to engage with it. Respect for diverse viewpoints and an appreciation for the game's multifaceted impact on pop culture are key. For some, it's a chilling masterpiece, while for others, it's a repetitive annoyance. But there's no denying that Five Nights at Freddy's has left an undeniable mark on the gaming landscape, inspiring both screams and theories in equal measure. Freddy's may be shrouded in lore as dense as its shadows, but the future shines surprisingly bright for the animatronic horror franchise. Steel Wool Studios, fueled by Security Breach's success, hints at new games with fresh stories, mechanics, and even animatronics to keep the jump scares fresh. For those craving a truly hair-raising experience, VR awaits with the potential for more help-wanted like chills and ruined DLC-style frights. Scott Cawthon, the mastermind behind Five Nights at Freddy's, continues to weave compelling narratives beyond the games, promising novels, comics, and maybe even lore-laden merchandise. The silver screen beckons too. The 2023 film's mixed reception hasn't dimmed the embers of sequels or spin-offs, while TV shows and miniseries could untangle the complex web of FNAF's relationships. 
Imagine haunted houses, roller coasters, and interactive exhibits bringing the animatronics to life in theme parks ensuring pure terror for thrill-seekers. But Five Nights at Freddy's thrives on its community. The creativity is infectious, spawning art, music, animations, and even fan-made games. Coffin's official Fazbear Fanverse initiative nurtures this vibrant community, ensuring FUNAF thrives beyond official releases. Competitive esports could even arise from the ashes of strategy and quick reflexes, with official or community-organized tournaments pitting players against each other in a battle for Freddy Fazbear's pizzeria supremacy. Ultimately, the future of FUNAF rests in the hands of its creators and its passionate fanbase. With a dedicated community, an ever-expanding universe, and the potential to conquer new media, FUNAF seems poised to thrill and captivate for years to come. The unique blend of horror, mystery, and lore will keep fans guessing, while the animatronic shadows continue to hold secrets just waiting to be unearthed. The only certainty is this. Five Nights at Freddy's will never truly leave the stage, its chilling melody sure to echo in the hearts of players for generations to come.